Hi, my name is GV. I'm a first year law student studying at Teddy Hall and I'm from Wolverhampton in the West Midlands. So law is a very academically challenging but also rewarding degree at the same time. It is a little bit different in comparison to the other first year subjects because we have our first year exams which are called MODS at the end of our second term in comparison to around June time. So this does mean you are a little bit under time pressure, but that's absolutely okay because everyone's in the same boat. So for our mods, we study three subjects, Roman law, constitutional law and criminal law. Um, and you might be thinking what Roman law is. And honestly, that's still what I thought in my first couple of tutorials. But what is really great at Oxford is we have really supportive tutors, especially at Teddy. Um, so our head tutor, Joanna, is so lovely. Um, and she's always accessible with any questions, law or non-law related. Um, and they genuinely want to see you do well um, and to make you feel that you're supported. And also with criminal law, our tutor helped to write our textbook. So you really are getting some of the best tutors who really know their stuff. Um, in terms of workload, we have typically one and a half or two essays a week, which we write for our tutorials. And this might seem like a lot and sometimes it does get a lot but i think once you start learning how to navigate yourself through the reading list um it does become a lot easier with time we also have two tutorials a week and tutorials are basically discussions between your tutor and about two to three other students and they're a really really great way of discussing what you've learned this week discussing any questions or uh, areas of that topic that you don't understand and also working your way through questions and debating um, and it's a really great way of getting involved um, and understanding um, areas of the law that you might not have understood before um, and yeah I really enjoy tutorials and that's the main form of learning so the law faculty also run lectures as well um, and it's recommended that you go to them because they're a really good introductory um, source of information when you're doing your reading but you'll quickly find that law is very independent and the majority of where your information is coming from is from yourself so when you're reading cases textbooks articles journals all of that sort of stuff in preparation for your tutorials so a lot of the information is coming from you but as i said you're supported so much by your tutor and also your cohort um you're all in that together so it's good that we can kind of share different ideas and things like that. So with the law personal statement, I think it's a lot different to other subjects because the majority of people wouldn't have studied law uh, before their degree. So it really is about those supercurricular attributes. And what I mean by that is things to show uh, your interest in the law. And instead of listing things saying, I did this, I did this, I did this, what you really need to show is what you've done what you learned from it and perhaps that inspired you to investigate this area or read this journal article and things like that. And I was under the impression that you needed legal work experience um, to put on your personal statement and that is something that I didn't have until like, after I handed it in. Um, but that isn't further from the truth. I think you need to just show that you have interest in the law and that you have explored that interest. So whether that is um, going to free lectures provided by your local university, um, you can sit in your local Crown Court as well to observe a case. Um, you can read loads of different books. I would avoid general books like Letters to a Law Student because so many people have read that. I read two books, uh, The Secret Barrister and Eve Was Framed. Um, and I definitely recommend those um, or just any books that generally interest you about the law. Also, a lot of articles as well, the Financial Times in The Economist, Radio 4 have or Radio 2, I believe, have a legal podcast as well. So there are so many different things that you can do to show your interest in the law. What I would do is distance yourself from kind of general and broad statements such as I'm passionate about the law or I want to fix the criminal uh, justice system instead show what you have learned what you have done um one of the things that i did was talk about a case which we funnily enough study um in constitutional law and i'd recommend if you are going to talk about a case make sure you talk about one that you a have read and b that you understand it's a lot um more effective to talk about one that you understand um because if you talk about an obscure case to make yourself look more intelligent 
and if you're quizzed upon that in the interview and you don't really understand it that's not going to look as effective in comparison to if you talked about a case um that you do understand so there are so many different things that you can do and you, that you can talk about but make sure you just show your interest and i think in terms of um splitting up your personal statement i think i did mine as 80 percent academic and 20% uh, extracurricular but even with those extracurricular activities that I did I um, linked that in and kind of took out those skills that I gained and used that to show why I would be good at studying that subject um, so yeah so for Oxford and I think eight of the universities you have to sit the LMAT and this is not a test of your legal knowledge because you can't be expected to have any legal knowledge at that stage. It's more of a test of your aptitude skills and whether you'd be the right kind of law student to uh, study law. So what I mean by that is that they're not testing how much you know, they're testing your skills. So your ability to draw conclusions, your ability to summarise key bits of information, your verbal reasoning skills, and also your essay writing skills. Um, so in terms of the LMAT itself, there are two sections. The first section is a multiple choice section. So there are 42 different questions and it's based on um, several different texts. And I think it's basically like a comprehension um, test, but a very hard one. Um, so that's that section. And section B is the essay section. So you've got a list of different essays and you can pick a question. Honestly, the best piece of advice that I could give is to go to the LNAT website because not only will that explain what the LNAT is, it also has past papers and past papers are honestly, like with any exam, the key to kind of understanding the format of the test and also having a go at some of the questions and the essays um, and practicing those in time and conditions as well. Um, what's really important to remember is that there are specific dates that you need to abide by with the LMAT. So definitely go to the LMAT website because there's a specific registration date. You've got to sit it at um, a specific time. I think it's the 20th of October, um, but go to the website and it will tell you absolutely everything. Um, and what I also did was buy an LMAT book. So it just had a lot of past paper questions. Um, from Amazon I think it was like 10 or 15 quid but that's honestly all I did I didn't study a lot for it I think I studied in the I think I studied um, for around one month for the LNAT but I just made sure that I really knew what kind of questions were about to come up and also made sure that my timing was okay um, so honestly don't worry about the LNAT too much it's just one component um, of all of those different stages of your personal statement and your whole UCAS application. So I originally applied to New College and I was pulled to Teddy Hall before the interview and I didn't know that that, that could happen but it can happen and um, I had two 20-minute interviews at Teddy Hall and the most important piece of advice I could give you is to check your emails, turn your notifications on um, in the days leading up to the interview because we were actually given a case at I think around six o'clock in the evening before our interview and I didn't have my notifications on or anything and I just randomly checked my emails at around 11 30 at night before my five o'clock train in the morning and I got a case and obviously you're stressed anyway and to have that um happen to you doesn't really help in that situation so yeah definitely look at um, your emails and check for pre-reading if you do get pre-reading which is often a case make sure you read it make sure you look at the judgments it's fine if you don't understand everything no one's expecting you to do so um, but that will often form the basis of one of your interviews my second interview um, was problem question based and um, with those sorts of interviews what I found really helpful was just to explain my thinking out loud and that kind of showed where I got my opinions from, where I got my answers from and that shows the tutors your kind of progression of thinking and I think that's really helpful because even if you don't get the right answers you're having a go, you're trying and you're trying to justify and even if your original opinion changes during the course you can say oh actually I don't think I agree with what I originally said, I now think it's this. So they're not looking for perfection, they're looking for people who they are able to teach and who have those skills of understanding and trying to adapt in different situations they're not trying to catch you out they are trying to see if you're the right kind of fit for oxford i thought my second interview was 
went horrifically and I did not think I would get in after that but my first interview was so interesting um, and we ended up talking about Brexit and the importance of immigrants in Wolverhampton which I never thought I would talk about in an interview and that was one of my kind of fond memories of the whole experience because your interviews are only about 40 minutes in total and you're there uh, for around two to three days you've got all of that time to explore Oxford and it's such a beautiful city, especially during the Christmas time where all the lights and different markets are on. So definitely go out and explore. I definitely did that because I never thought I'd go back to that city again because I didn't think I'd get in. Um, and also the student helpers at Teddy are so, so friendly. They're there to ask, um, they're there to help you with any of the questions that you might have and to take you to your interviews and you won't get lost. I got lost loads of times, but there were so many different student helpers to hand, um, get free food as well, you get accommodation and you can also meet a lot of different people who are also there for interviews and are in that same boat. So I met one of my really, really good friends um, at interview. So yeah, it is overall a really nice experience. And what I'd recommend is that even if it doesn't go to plan, just kind of get that experience out of your head um, because you've done as much as you can and you can't do anything about it. So the first thing I did was obviously get my A-levels. So I revised hard for those. And once I miraculously got in, um, a couple of days later, we got an email about some pre-reading and we got um, an introductory letter. Honestly, what I'd recommend is don't stress straight away because it seems very formal and very serious. And I was like, oh my gosh, what have I got myself into? Um, but honestly, don't worry about it at all. I definitely recommend to try and do the pre-reading as much as you can and don't leave it all till last minute. Um, and you don't have to buy all of the books because we have a really great library at Teddy. But if you do want to buy some of the books, so I bought, I think, four of the key texts that we needed. Um, I got mine from Amazon second hand for I think 30, 35 pounds for four of them. And you don't really need to go out and buy new ones at all. So don't worry about those books and don't worry if you don't understand anything because everyone's going to be in the same position as you. Um, and just really try to enjoy your time at home um, before you start uni. I really enjoy studying at Teddy. I didn't apply there originally, but honestly, it, it couldn't have been a better fit for me. Everyone is so lovely and we have such a great hall spirit. And I think um, everyone has said this, but it is genuinely so true. And because our site is quite small, you're always bumping into people, whether you're walking to the library, whether you're in the queue for dinner or whether you're chilling in the JCR, which is our common room. There are always people to talk to um we've got a really great peer support system we've got loads of welfare provisions um we have this thing called jcrt which is where like twice a week um we just have loads of food in the jcr and we have a really active um jcr student body who are always putting events on um aside from that we have so many extracurriculars from sports to um drama to music there really is things for everyone to get involved in no matter what your abilities are um, and everyone's just so lovely and I think that is something that I really valued at the start of uh, first term in Freshers Week because you are moving to a new place I've never studied law before I had that imposter syndrome anyway and just knowing that I was at a place where everyone was so lovely really helped me to kind of settle in a lot more Aside from that, our location is absolutely amazing. We're just off the high street. So we're about like a three minute walk to the Radcam and the Bodleian Libraries, like a 10 minute walk tops to the high street, 15 minute walk to um, the train station and like a seven minute walk to the law faculty. So with me, I'm always like lastminute.com and it helps that like I don't have to factor in traveling times. Um, and Teddy is so beautiful. Our library is an old church and it's just, just stunning. And I really enjoy being at Teddy and being a student there. So the main tip that I would give to anyone thinking of applying is just apply. And I think the right attitude to take towards the whole process is to see it as a challenge rather than I have to get into Oxford, I have to do this, I have to do this because you're just putting too much pressure on yourself otherwise and the way that I saw it was I never thought I would get in at all and I was like look I have five options even if I don't get into Oxford I've got four other, four other options and even if that doesn't work out I can go through clearing so there are different ways to get where I want to be 
and I saw it as a sort of challenge. I was like, hmm, let me see if I can get in. I didn't expect anything from it. And I think if you don't expect, you won't get too disappointed, whatever the outcome is. Um, and just have confidence in yourself, have confidence in your abilities. And even if you don't get in, I can guarantee you'll learn something from the whole experience um, and you will be more resilient. And I think it is such a valuable, the whole process is so valuable in itself. And just don't put that pressure on yourself. Just kind of have the confidence and go for it. Um, so yeah, I hope this video has been helpful. If you have any more questions, feel free to leave them down in the comments box below. And also follow SEH Access on Instagram for behind the scenes of what it's like to be studying at Teddy Hall. Thank you.